What is going on guys? Welcome back and today I'm here to talk about another move that was made by Al Avila. He was a busy man and as I predicted in my last video when I talked about him getting K-Rod, the Tigers did go out and make another trade and it would be a cheaper trade, something that wouldn't be um, top of the line to fill the outfield position spot because they have such a need in the bullpen and they have such a need in the starting rotation, and a, a payroll that has so many bloated contracts, Miguel Cabrera, Victor Martinez, Justin Verlander, Anibal Sanchez, pretty soon J.D. Martinez is going to be getting paid, you know, Ian Kinsler's making 12 or 13 million bucks this year, that they really couldn't afford to go out and sign a Justin Upton, to sign, you know, a top-tier free agent outfielder, or you bring back Yoana Cespedes. It just wasn't going to happen. So this move of them going out and actually getting back Cameron Mabin. Now, let's put this in perspective here. Cameron Mabin and Andrew Miller were the two centerpieces for the Tigers when they traded to get Miguel Cabrera. Not only did neither one of those guys work out for the Marlins, Mabin is now back on the Tigers, and Andrew Miller goes out and becomes a stud closer. So that trade is even worse for the Florida Marlins. That trade just every single year somehow keeps it. It's kind of like, you know, now you look at it, um, the Doug Fister trade, which who I hope the Tigers bring back. There's speculation that Doug Fister might be coming back to the Tigers. I actually wrote an article, which uh, I will link below if you guys want to read it on Baseball Central, that uh, the Tigers should go back out and resign Doug Fister. And you look at the Doug Fister trade now. Steve Lombardozzi didn't even make it out of spring training. He was he was a Tiger for two weeks traded. Uh, Ian kroll has gone now. Robbie Ray, who was supposed to be this, he was the reason why they traded for him. He's a centerpiece guy. You know, he was a Tiger for a season, made like five starts, gone, traded. Now he's in Arizona. Ian kroll has gone, and he was never good, never did anything. He wasn't even a lefty specialist. He couldn't do anything. Besides, give up gopher balls. He gave up so many home runs. He wasn't effective. He was up and down from the minors. He was very inconsistent. He was not a good pitcher. So the Tigers uh, trade Ian Kroll over to, uh, and one other guy, um, Gabe Spire. He was uh, a part of that trade last year with Rick Porcello and Yoannis Cespedes. Uh, he was the other third piece, the three for one Spire. Uh, Alex Wilson and Porcello, uh, and uh, Cespedes came over to Detroit and we traded him, uh, Rick Porcello. And, uh, so it's going to be Kroll and Spire going down to the Braves. Now, if you're my, uh, an Atlanta Braves fan, you got to be sitting here scratching your head going, what the hell, John Hart? Because the former regime sits there and locks up Craig Kimbrell to a long-term extension. They lock up Anderson Simmons to a long-term extension. They lock up Freddie Freeman to a long-term extension. You know, But all of a sudden now, these Braves teams are like, wow, they got a nice, solid, young corn place. They're going to be able to win for some years to come now with these guys. You know, with up with Justin Upton out there and left, you know, because they, they had him for a couple uh, years left over and Androgen and Short and, you know, you had Evan Gaddis and Freddie Freeman and Craig Kimbrell and, you know, Julio Tehran, uh, you know, just all these players, Alex Wood, you know, and it's just been blown up. Evan Gaddis is gone, Simmons is gone, Kimbrell is gone, Upton's gone, both Uptons are gone, actually, both Uptons are gone, there's rumors that they're potentially shopping Freddie Freeman, no more Brian McCann, I mean, they have no one, absolutely no remnants left, I mean, like last year when they signed Nick Markakis, you know, that, that move made no sense whatsoever, you know, they trade Jason Hayward, this hometown kid that was supposed to be, you know, a brave for life, you know, he's gone now, and I mean, all these, these guys that made the Braves so good, uh, you know, when they were competing for playoffs for a little bit there in, in the early 2010s, you know, your, like I said, your Anderson Simmons and, you know, your Craig Kimbrels and your Freddie Freeman, your Brian McCann, your Jason Haywards, you know, all the, all those guys that made those teams good. Chris Johnson was really good the first year they got him over. Martin, you know, they had Martin Prado for a little bit. You know, he was really good on the Braves as well. Um, you know, Omar Infante, he was, a, 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 I think he made an all-star team one year with the Braves um, one year. So, I mean, he was, he was a part of it. Um, I remember when they got Dan Ugla, and uh, he was terrible. He hit, like, 120 in the first half, and then went on, like, a 40-game hitting streak, some BS like that. It was crazy, and ended up bringing up his average, like, 220 because he was so bad. But neither here nor there, if you're a Braves fan, man, it's... They re-signed A.J. Pruszynski, so... I guess you got that to look forward to, and you got Nick Markakis, hopefully healthy for a full season for you. So, uh, which he might get traded. Who knows what John Hart's doing down there, you know, trying to sit there. I, and they might even be trading Shelby Miller now. So, who knows what they're going to do. So, looking at this from the Tigers' side of it, 
The Tigers get a cheap outfield replacement bat. Cameron Maben is a guy that kind of reestablished his value last year. Uh, he would spent the last four years on the Padres before being traded over to the to the Braves uh, in the Craig Kimbrell trade. And Kimbrell uh, and uh, Maben last year actually had a, a decent season for a guy that uh, you know is what he is a backup outfielder. Um, he had, actually had a couple really, really hot months early on in the year. In May, he hit 290, uh, hit two home runs, 17 RBIs. He slugged 409, and then got on base at a great clip, 371. He only struck he struck out 18 times at 11 walks. And then in June, he hit uh, 314, which was his best month. Uh, uh, home earned 14 RBIs, stole six bases, uh, walked nine times to 15 strikeouts, got on base at a 366 clip. Now, he's not a guy that... It, it, ever really showed like the kind of power potential they thought he had he was more of like a speed guy um that was could put could really shag it out in center field um and he's always been a guy that's graded out extremely well defensively he had his, he's had as high as years as plus 15 defensive runs saved out in the outfield and he's had as high as years of uh 13 uh, UZR 150, which is uh, these are both the metric uh, defensive metrics based on uh, run saved and, and outfield efficiency. Uh, but last year he kind of had a blip. He had negative 16 defensive run saved, which was the worst of his career. His prior worst came in 2009 when he had negative six. But when you have a track record of every single year besides three, where you have a positive plus run, a defensive run saved, and a, a positive UZR every single year. You know, it, it's it's got to be just something of fluke, fluke defensive uh, blunder this year for 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 his defense to fall as bad as it was. Because this guy's not even thirty yet. He's still got the speed. You know, he stole as many as forty bases one year, uh, which was two thousand eleven. He stole uh, forty bases for the Padres uh, last year. He shagged twenty three and only got caught six times, which isn't too bad of a ratio. Um, but for a guy, that main reason why they got him was the platoon with him and Ghost out in center field because they needed a platoon outfielder with Rajah. This pretty much seals the end for Rajah Davis getting brought back for the Tigers because Davis was your other defender that was pretty much backing up Ghost. Uh, but Davis, you know, can't hit right-handers very well whatsoever, uh, and you know he was kind of fluky. I mean, he had a good second half last year for the Tigers, and he had a good first year as a Tiger. But you know, the speed's starting to diminish. He's not a great outfielder. He doesn't take good routes to the baseball. And uh, you know, Cameron Mabin's a guy. You know, he's kind of the Rajay De- Rajay Davis esque hitter you know he's I think he's a bit better hitter than Raja Davis the defense I, I definitely think is a lot better than Raja Davis you know you get the you a little bit more youthfulness out of him you get a, a guy who's only making nine uh, seven million bucks and then he, he has an option for nine million next year with a, te- a one million dollar team buyout so he's very cost efficient uh, to have on your team for the next year potentially two years um, and he's he's pretty much your ideal guy that you need for uh, you know t- to, to back up Anthony goes uh, Cameron Maben this year, you know, he hit 276 off right-handed hitter, uh, right-handed pitching with seven home runs, 49 RBIs, and uh, you know that's exactly what you need. You know, someone that's gonna and he got on base at a 323 clip. Surprisingly, though, he uh, he got on base at a better clip against lefties, which I wouldn't expect whatsoever, but he did. Um, and he's kind of a reverse split guy because normally righties hit lefties better than than uh, they hit uh, left-handed hitters. But this, he hits righties better than he hits lefties. And but it's a, it's not too far of a difference for the clip uh, wise. But neither here nor there. Uh, it was a cheap move. It was a pretty much seals the end of Raja Davis out in center field. It was a cheap move. You know. It, um, Someone that can get the job done. You can, you know, fill him in. You know, you can kind of mask his bat in the lineup. You know, you can limit the game he play, limit the games he plays. Um, kind of pick and choose what days he's going to start. And uh, you know, he's going to go out there and he's going to play good defense for you. Uh, he's going to hit probably 260. You know, he's going to get on base at probably a 320 clip. And he's probably going to steal you 20 to 25 bags. Um, and that's about it. Now you can delegate your funds to starting pitching. And you can uh, go after more bullpen arms, you know, because you filled the hole you needed in the outfield. Um, you know, they might probably go after one more uh, outfielder um, because Maven and Ghost, uh, you know, they're good for a center field, but you still need a corner outfield spot. And, uh, you know, I don't know how they view Stephen Moy or Tyre Collins if they're going to go into spring training and go, hey, these are the two guys that we're going to give the, the opportunity to, the at-bats to in Lakeland to see if um, you know, these are going to be our, our, our corner outfielders of the future. But... 
as of now, center field is taken care of, and it pretty much spells the end of Rajah Davis as a Detroit Tiger. And I like the move. Like I said, you didn't give up much. Ian Crow was very ineffective anyways. He wasn't good. It just makes the Doug Fister trade look even worse than it actually was. Um, you get someone cheap, get someone cost-effective, get someone that can play some defense, get someone that can hit righties at a decent clip uh, to, to platoon with Ghost. And uh, you know, it don't cost you much, and you still got a good amount of money to mess with to go out and fix your bullpen and fix your starting rotation. So it was a good move by the Tigers, and uh, I got no complaints with it. I think it was a solid move, good move by Alavila, and uh, Maven's gone full circle. Now he's back with the other team that's drafted him. So how weird is that? So that's all I got for you guys today. Um, any more Tigers moves happen, I will be back on here to discuss them and talk about them. And as always, check out BaseballCentral.com. I'm on there. Check out Baseball Central's YouTube channel. I do transaction analysis on there as well as other videos. And uh, that's all I got for you guys today. And I will be back on here if any more moves happen. Have a good one.